So, Greg, I'm going to hand this over to you because I believe that Shell Crescent has done a great job of really showcasing what energy can mean for this region, what it, the opportunities are. So with that said, Greg, I'm going to hand it to you, please, and uh, your opportunity to showcase. Hey, George, thanks, and it's great to be with everybody this morning. You know, I was in San Diego <laughs> about three hours ago, not physically, but on the air. I was in Miami just an hour ago. And what happened, Shell Crescent, we put out a pitch to the folks we work with. And the whole idea was, let's bring manufacturing back here. And the, and the pitch was, did the coronavirus reveal the reason to bring manufacturing back to the United States? It went nuts, folks. I mean, we've had, I've got six hits already. I'm on two national shows coming up this week, another one next week. But the point is, we do have a once in a lifetime opportunity. And, you know, I'm going to just kind of follow up more what uh, Tom started with. That stuff's all important, but the real thing that the average person in the public has suddenly realized that we, I didn't know, and I'm, in, I'm in the economic development business. I didn't know 80% of our medications came from China. I wouldn't buy my dog food from China. And I'm, here I find out that the medications my wife and I are taking, the odds are they were made over there. And I think suddenly we realize things like respirators, uh, those suits that Tom showed you, all the medical equipment, gloves, most of those things are made overseas. And there was a reason for that because Arab oil embargo, energy crisis, suddenly we didn't have energy. Asia had cheap labor and that's where it all went. And suddenly, the, and the world is, and I guess really the message today for everybody, the world's changed and it's changed in a lot of different ways. But, you know, certainly the coronavirus has changed everything. Wally Candle, he's a senior VP from Solvay. He's a co-founder at Shell Crescent. And he's part of our uh, executive committee. He said, look, guys, everybody is focused on the virus. They're trying to get their, help their companies to survive. They're securing their people. So they're not worried about expansion. So they, they get that. But that's going to change, obviously, as we move through this thing. But the first big change happened in 2017. We, we worked with IHS Market and did a study comparing a petrochemical plant, a cracker built here to one built on the Gulf Coast. Their VP called me in October last, two, three years ago, and he said, Greg, he said, we thought you might have a slight advantage up there. We had no idea to be this big. But the bottom line, not what that study said, a cracker built here, like Shell, is four times more profitable than one built on the Gulf Coast. That was on Main State 2018 at World Petrochemical Conference. Literally flipped the whole petrochemical world. Nobody could see that coming. And it's all about logistics. We won't get into that. But the big thing, go ahead, go to the first slide. There we go. That's my front yard. We're all sitting here because of the virus. And by the way, my yards never looked that good in April because I never had the time to work with it. But the point is, go ahead, go to the next slide. This is what we're really worried about. And when we did our second study with IHS Market and was on stage last year in 2019, first we just looked at ethane. The second one looked at methane, ethane, propane, butane. And this region, folks, what's really important to everybody on this call is we are advantaged in all those products. And those are all the feedstocks. So it makes sense to be here. But more importantly, this is the only place where we are sitting right now on planet Earth where you can actually build a petrochemical plant on top of the feedstock and in the middle of your customers. By the way, this is Shell Crescent, USA, Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania. We're not fussy about what section of the, the state of PA you're in. It's all part of it. And one thing you can do for yourselves this morning, please, the brand we adopted about four years ago was Shell Crescent USA. We, the brands that were out there, the Northeast, if you think of Northeast, when we were in Japan, everybody thinks of Boston and New York, not, not good for us. And we drill in this part of the world some of the most technically sophisticated wells on the planet, 3,000 feet, under, 3, 000, 3 miles underground, horizontal, unbelievable. Appalachia doesn't, doesn't cut it, folks. When you say Appalachia, people think about, you know what they think about. No shoes, log cabins. We're better than that. So that's, that's where the brand came from. But go ahead and flip to the next slide. Because 
we are, a lot of folks, when we started going to these World Petrochemical Conferences, everybody knew the U.S. is producing the gas. What they didn't know is where it's coming from. And 85% of the new natural gas production in this country is coming from here, Shell Crescent, our region, where we are. If you're going to build a, a, a plant that's fueled with natural gas liquids or, or even methane, don't you want to be where the growth is? The rest of the company, country is just breaking even. But here's the, here's the, the big aha. Go ahead and flip to the next slide. This is where the demand for that stuff is. Polyethylene. Go ahead and flip to the next one. Polypropylene. Seven, over 70% of the demand for those materials is right here. So what we're, what we're doing today, folks, is our natural gas liquids are being shipped somewhere, some to Europe, some to the Gulf Coast. If it goes to the Gulf Coast, they turn it into polyethylene, polypropylene pallets, and they ship them where? Right back up here. So that's what Shell figured out is if you build the plant here, then, and with, what, what's Shell doing? They're, they're, when that plant's done, folks, they're gonna be trucking most of those polyethylene pellets. And can you imagine right now, if you're making stuff, if you're making a product, even if you're making a ventilator, which people are here, the raw feedstock for that has to come from the Gulf Coast and it's taken up to 30 to 45 days for it to get here. What Shell's gonna be able to do, if you're making that product, you can call them on Monday and they told us you could have product by Wednesday. That's huge. And you, you know, anybody that's in business understands inventories, but that's what makes this opportunity such a big deal anymore. And the world's changed. We're the leading oil and gas producer in the world. And that's what Tom was talking about is so spot on. That's where these products come from. And what, when I was in just this little bit ago, Miami, their question was, well, you know, why aren't we making this stuff here? Because all of a sudden, the public's realizing that, oh my God, these masks, these, these face shields, all this stuff, our medications are all coming from China. We got to fix that. And it left because we didn't have the energy and they had cheap labor. Now, folks, and that's what really this is all about. This is really all about people and protecting them from the virus. That, that, that whole, uh, go ahead, flip to the next slide. Because now we have this incredible opportunity. Those are the wells. Red is the Utica wells, and it probably needs to be updated because there's more of those. Uh, 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 red's the Marcellus, green's the Utica. Funny, at that state line up in northwest, west PA, northeast PA, that's, we all know that that's not a fault. I mean, there's Marcellus on the other side. And, our, and, and think about this, folks. All this stuff that Tom was talking about, that, that New York is crying for, ventilators, masks, those gowns, those face shields. He des Cuomo desperately wants that stuff. And you may not have known last week that in his budget bill, he very quietly slipped in a permanent ban on fracking in New York. Folks, it's, we've got to carry that message that the reason why we can manufacture here, the reason why it's so economically feasible is because we're not depending on the Middle East. We're not depending on someone else, to, Russia, to send us our product. We have it here. We have it in this region. We have it literally under the plants. And that's such a big deal that if we would ever do something really stupid like ban fracking, can you imagine going back to the days of the Arab oil embargo and the energy crisis where we were dependent on somebody else? That's our advantage. And if we're going to protect our people, if we really care about people, the best thing we can do is take advantage of the resources we have right here and. And by the way, in Ohio, my gosh, there's like they've got the leading employment in the plastics industry. The people that make stuff out of all these polyethylene, polypropylene, PVC pellets are all here in this region. And they're supplying this market. So what a, if you're going to supply the U.S. market, the best place to be what we're seeing now, 30 years, this was like the Gulf Coast, 30 years ago, China may have been the answer. Japan may have been the answer. Today, the answer is right here where we sit because we've got cheap energy, cheap feedstock, we've got abundant feedstock. We have now with automation, we can manufacture right here and actually beat China at their own game. 
And the beauty of that is we're making it here. We're shipping it here. We got the logistical advantage over them. The only thing we have to do is carry that message out because even the manufacturers, as fast as this happened in the petrochemical industry, there were still people building plants on the Gulf Coast and didn't realize this was the best place to be. They'd already made those big decisions. Now's the time to work with our manufacturers, our petrochemical, our plastics folks, and let's see if we can't change that. It's time to bring that manufacturing here because we have the economic advantage right here in our backyard, folks. So I think that's, uh, matter of fact, just a couple of things. They, they did ask me to mention a couple of things on uh, regulations, a couple of laws that uh, West Virginia passed just recently. By the way, just you know, I, I, uh, thanks for flipping that slide because we already have, we got the wells and this is, uh, don't worry about all the, the detail on it, but a lot of pipelines, a lot of fractionators, there's a, a whole bunch of infrastructure here. We don't have underground storage yet for uh, natural, for uh, ethane, but that can come very easily. But right now we've got the pipelines, we've got the wells. There's an awful lot of infrastructure that's here already that we can, we can build on. So, but we're already seeing in West Virginia, a law was passed to encourage uh, West Virginia manufacturers to use local natural gas liquids. There's some tax credits that they've, that they've come up with there. There's also in West Virginia, Ohio's already had this where, uh, long story short, it's a bypass bill. If you're using a lot of natural gas, you, do, you can actually go direct to the producers or producer consortium. So, uh, some really good stuff, I think, that, that we're seeing here. But, you know, we couldn't, here's really thought to leave you with. We couldn't control having the virus come. I mean, we can blame the Chinese, but it doesn't really matter because we got to deal with it. We can blame the media because they were so focused on Trump and impeachment that nobody was watching what was going on. But now we have this opportunity. People need to understand the importance of plastics, the importance of petrochemicals that Tom was talking about, and why this is the place on planet Earth where we should be manufacturing masks, we should be manufacturing gloves, we should be doing all that stuff here, and we can, and we can do it economically. We've got to carry that message out here. We need a strong petrochemical industry, and we darn sure got to have a strong oil and gas industry, because if our domestic industry goes away, folks, so does our economic advantage. This is our opportunity to create jobs and to create a healthy environment for our folks because we've already lowered CO2 14% because of increased use of natural gas. We're on track to meet Paris, the Paris Accord, we're not even there. So this is good for the environment. This is good for our people. And it's, it's, there's going to be another virus. I don't know when, but this is our time to protect people against that by bringing that manufacturing back here, bringing those pharmaceuticals back here. I encourage you, carry the message, call it Shell Crescent USA, but this is our time, folks. Let's make a difference. We'll fix today, but our, our goal is to, we gotta help people in the future. We can't control today, but we can darn sure control what we do and make tomorrow a better day for us. Thank you, appreciate being here. Well, Greg, needless to say, thank you. Uh, your insights are critical uh, on this as we move forward, because to your point, we have to make certain that we have everything prepared for that future. And if you look at the past, the past was to put facilities in the Middle East or elsewhere. And today we see the folly of that. We also understand that, you know, in my lifetime, when I worked for Columbia Gas and a hurricane would hit, you know, the price of natural gas would just spike overnight because they would shut in uh, supply. Now we have the supply everywhere. And it's the opportunity to bring the manufacturers, bring these opportunities for plastics, for ventilators, to bring them where the problem is. And you laid it out. Shell Crescent has that opportunity. It's a very unique situation and area with as much natural gas uh, and ethane that we have. And you're seeing Shell construct its cracker here. And it will be useful to 3D printing. And again, as you mentioned, all the different physical things needed for the healthcare, uh, especially ventilators. So we want to do everything we can to encourage people to look beyond the Gulf Coast, get them up here to Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. And I know with our last speaker, Carl Marrera, he's working diligently to make certain that Pennsylvania is poised to take a hold of that future, get us situated that we can be prepared for what's next 
and be ready to move with the proper policies.